Great meatballs don't require that many ingredients. In fact, you probably have everything you need to make these two meatball dishes in your pantries right now. Don't believe me? Watch the video. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dishes and Fishes where I show you how to cook and set hooks. Today we're making meatballs, but we're not using beef. We're actually gonna be using chicken thighs and sausage. This is one of my go-to appetizers if I'm having a lot of people over. It's easy in the crock pot, it's cheap to make, and a lot of these ingredients I have in my freezer in my pantry. A cheap and delicious meal or appetizer. So let's get into it. All right guys, like I said, to make these meatballs, we're actually gonna be using sausage and chicken thighs. And you can use sweet or hot sausage, but no matter what kind of sausage you use, you're gonna to wanna to take the casings off first. So to do that, I'm simply gonna just cut down the middle with a knife and then peel the casings off on the outside, just like this. And I'm gonna go through all my sausages and peel off all the casings. And you can use hot or sweet Italian sausage for this, doesn't matter. Just make sure you use chicken thighs and not breasts because the breasts are a little too lean for this. And you also want to use a one-to-one -one ratio of sausage to chicken. And once you have that, you're going to put your chicken thighs into the food processor to grind them up. You can use a meat grinder too, but I thought the food processor was more home applicable. And now we're going to add the sausage to that salmonella swirl in the food processor. Make sure you wash that out good when you're done, obviously. And mix that to combine until everything is a nice uniform paste. It should look like this. Now we're going to prep the ingredients for inside the meatballs and in the sauce. All these ingredients are things that I have in my pantry quite frequently. So we're going to start out with one diced white onion and four cloves of garlic. And I'm just going to crush those up with my hand and mince them up finely. Parsley is completely optional for this recipe. I know this probably isn't in your pantry. It's just going to be used as a garnish and a little bit of green color. Roasted red peppers are not optional. I use these in a lot of different recipes. Definitely a handy condiment to have in your fridge. And I'm gonna take probably the equivalent of three quarters to one whole cup of peppers and dice them up and set those aside. Again, I use these in several other recipes. I think they're really good and handy. Now we're gonna sweat down some of those vegetables in a saute pan. So I'm gonna use half of the white onions that we just diced, half of the red peppers that we just diced, and get those going in some olive oil and make sure you season them as you go with salt and pepper. I'm also gonna add a little bit of Italian seasoning and a pinch of sage. Once they're translucent and smelling good, I'm gonna add half of the garlic cloves and just a little bit of parsley at the end. And then I'm gonna dump that cooked vegetable mixture into my meatballs. Raw vegetables in meatballs is not good. Now we're gonna add one egg per pound of meat and a quarter cup of breadcrumbs per pound of meat. I have three pounds of meat here. Kind of the kicker ingredient here is blue cheese, two tablespoons per pound of meat, and Dijon mustard, one tablespoon per pound of meat. These are gonna flavor and emulsify the mixture, and then I'm gonna season that with salt and pepper. I also like to grate in one half cup of Parmesan cheese per pound of meat. And I've always been taught to mix meatballs by hand, so get your hands in there, get all these ingredients nice and incorporated. Once the mix is made, it's time to sear the meatballs. You absolutely need to sear meatballs when you make them. Don't just dunk them in sauce. But one thing that I'm doing that is optional is coating them in flour. I know this is kind of non-traditional, but I like doing it this way because I like the remnants that searing the meatballs in flour leaves behind in the pan for my sauce. And I also think that coating them in flour gives them a nice crust. I just like to do it this way. You obviously don't have to do it this way, but flour or no flour, get them into a hot pan, dunk them in olive oil, get them seared off, take your time, just crisp them up really nicely because this crisp will be imperative no matter how you serve the meatballs at the end. If you're doing this in a crock pot, after they're seared, throw them right into your crock pot with sauce. If you're doing them like me, put them into a greased Pyrex dish and wait for the sauce and they should look like this, nice and brown and crispy. To make the sauce, we're gonna quickly deglaze that meatball searing pan with some white wine, any Chardonnay or any white wine you have will do. The rest of those white onions and the rest of those roasted red peppers and get that sweated down. Once they're translucent and kind of begin to form this loose sauce, we're going to add the rest of the minced garlic and continue to sweat that down. Right at the end, I'm going to add some parsley just because I have it here. And I'm going to season again with some pantry seasonings, Italian seasoning, and pepper. Any can of diced tomatoes will do. Today we've got the San Marzano special. But anything you have in your pantry will make an adequate meatball sauce, I promise. And we're going to let those ingredients just bubble. Don't boil them too hard. Just let them bubble gently like this for 20 or 30 minutes. Stir it occasionally. 
Now one of the key ingredients for this sauce is pesto, and typically I use the Costco pesto, which looks like this. This is not the normal pesto I use in this shop, but it's what I had in my pantry. And typically I like to just add two big globs to it, probably three or four tablespoons. And this is really good. Shouts out to Costco for a jarred pesto. It is quality. The next kind of kicker ingredient that transforms the sauce is this smoked paprika. It changes it from a sweet marinara style sauce to a smoky tomato sauce, which I like a little bit better for this meatball. And once that bubbles for 15 or 20 minutes, I'm going to turn off the heat and stir in a quarter cup of heavy cream. I think the look of an orange sauce looks a little bit better than red. I also like the creamy element this adds to the sauce. Once my sauce is all together, I'm going to ladle it into a food processor or blender and puree it until it is smooth. Once it's smooth, I'm going to ladle it into my Pyrex dish on the bottom. I'm also going to coat the tops of the meatballs with the sauce and get everything nice and saucy. Then I'm going to cover that in foil and bake it at 400 degrees for 30 minutes. I would also suggest reserving some of the meatball sauce so it doesn't get saturated in grease from the meatballs. After 30 minutes, your meatballs should be nice and steamed and cooked. I'm going to top those with some mozzarella cheese and pop those under the broiler for two minutes on high so the cheese can melt and turn into that crispy pizza cheese goodness texture and look. If you're serving them individually, this is how I would do it. I would ladle down a little circular pattern of sauce onto a plate. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then drop a meatball into the sauce and make a big mess like I did in that last shot. Put the meatball down in the sauce, garnish it with a heavy amount of freshly grated Parmesan cheese and some basil. I got this little basil leaf from a basil plant outside. And that's it. This is a meatball that is a little bit different than the more traditional meatballs, I think. Your guests should like it. It is good. Now for the meatball that is way worse for you, the old meatball bread pocket. So to make this, we're going to need some string cheese and some crescent rolls from Pillsbury. We're going to start by just quickly cutting the string cheese into one half to three quarter inch segments. String cheese is the best cheese to stuff inside stuff. And I'm going to unroll my crescent rolls onto a flat surface. Pretty simple. Then I'm going to make meatballs into ping pong ball size or smaller and kind of just depress them with my thumb, put a piece of string cheese in and roll it into a ball and make sure the cheese is sealed inside. Then I'm simply going to put that into the crescent roll, wrap the corners around the meatball like a hug and then roll it up nice and easy so it looks like a crescent roll, croissant roll, however you pronounce it. So once I have all eight of those, I'm going to cook them in the oven at 375 degrees for 25 minutes until they're golden brown. Then I'm going to brush them with garlic parsley butter and these are very, very addicting, but great for parties and get-togethers. It's a steamy, buttery, cheesy bundle of joy. And you can dunk these in that sauce that you reserved from earlier. Plating this one's pretty simple. Sauce, put down your bread pockets, garnish them with some Parmesan cheese, and call it a day, people. These two meatball dishes are very easy, but I promise you they're good. Try them at your next get together or your next party or 4th of July. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.